One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, left, right. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right, left. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, slip, fall, ow, ow. Ah, what happened to me? Where am I? Stage light. An audience? Where am I? Oh my goodness, I'm on stage. Okay, let me get back up, continue my dance. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, left, right. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right, left. One, two, three, one, two, three, finish and pose. Okay, walk off stage. Ah, what happened to me? My head hurts so much. I took a fall the September of 2018 while performing on stage. This innocuous fall led in to a traumatic concussion, which was later diagnosed as post-concussive syndrome. Because of my brain injury, I was left unable to think, walk, stand, or speak. During this time, I endured several different symptoms that was extraordinary. Imagine that you're in my shoes. Imagine. You're laying down on the hospital bed, and one of your peculiar symptoms that lasted a one-year-long hospitalization journey was the loss of sensation. You're laying down, the doctor walks in. The doctor grabs your big toe and looks at you. She asks, can you feel that? You look at her grabbing your toe, you should be able to feel it, right? But for some reason, you look up you say no. She grabs a freshly sharpened pencil, comes back, this time moves up to your knee. She pokes it three times, looks up and says, can you feel that? Ow, ow, ow! You're trying to fake it and tell yourself that you should be able to feel it. It should hurt, right? But for some reason, no, can't feel it. All right, she moves on and gets an ice cube out of the freezer, moves up to your thigh and drops it. She looks up at you and says, can you feel that? Look at your thigh, look at the doctor, look at your parents around you. Back at the ice cube and it's melting, she'll be cold, right? You look up, no can't feel it. Okay, she puts the ice cube away, grabs her clipboard, fail, fail, fail. Fail the sensation test. Another symptom during this time that I faced was these seizure-like syncope episodes in which I would faint, come back, faint, come back, faint, and come back. We've all heard of short-term memory loss and long-term memory loss. This was very unique, as every time I woke up from these faints, I didn't know who I was, where I was, who I was surrounded by, or what I was doing. During this time, it was very difficult to even hold a simple conversation. My little brother, Kishan, would often visit me in the hospital room. He would walk in and I would say, hey, Kishan, it's so nice to see you. I haven't seen you in so long. When did you get here? Hey, Kishan, come in. When did you get here? Hey, Kishan, hi, come in. Hey, Kishan, when did you get here? Come in, I haven't seen you in so long. Hey, Kishan, come in. I haven't seen you in so long. Over and over and over again, he would reply, hey, Akka, just got here a minute ago. Just got here five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, an hour ago, three hours ago, yesterday. And it would just keep going on and on and on because I would keep forgetting. Another time, I was doing physical therapy trying to move my wrist back and forth. I didn't have any sensation on my wrist either. My dad was behind me, patting my back. You got this, Kirtana, keep going, you're doing great, you got it, you got it. In the middle of my physical therapy, I faint, I come back. I don't recognize him. I point at my mom, hey you, in the red, Call 911. I don't know who this man is. Imagine forgetting your own parents. 
Imagine trying to convey a point, or hold on. Imagine trying to convey a point, but in the middle of it, you kind of forget. Hold on, I'm, I'm forgetting. Imagine trying to convey a point and you just can't. Imagine. We've all learned in kindergarten about these squiggly little figures called as numbers. When I took a fall to my head, my brain shook a little. There's a certain part of the brain that controls the numerical complexity. For some reason, that part of my brain wasn't firing any neurons to the rest of my brain. Because of that, it gave me the false feeling that I forgot what a number was. We've all been to the doctor's office. Every time you or I walk in, they press on you and they say, on a scale of one to 10, how much does this hurt? Imagine not knowing what one meant or 10 meant. How do you answer that question? Well, because I was 17 during my fall and hospitalization, I took a walk to the, in my wheelchair to the pediatric toy room and picked up a traffic signal, a toy traffic signal, that is. The next time the doctor asked me how much it hurt on a scale of one to 10, I looked at the signal and I pointed to yellow. Everyone was confused. What is she talking about? Well, I said, you want to know how much it hurts? Red means it hurts a lot. Yellow means it hurts a medium amount, and green means it doesn't hurt at all. It hurts yellow. <laughs> the doctors were so confused, but I was so proud of myself. I was using what I did know versus what I didn't know to still answer their question and tell them what they're asking. Every single time a doctor, nurse, or hospital official walked into my room, they would have to identify me, that they're in the right patient's room, of course. They would walk in and they would say, here's Nashini Vasan, what's your date of birth? Imagine forgetting your own birthday. I didn't know what April meant, or 10th meant, or 2001 meant. I would look down on my wristlet to try to read my birthday, but because of my brain injury and double vision, I couldn't understand what it was saying. I would look at my mom and I would say, Amma, what's my birthday? She would tell me, April 10, 2001. I would relay back, April 10, 2001. This relay process occurred almost 10 times a day. Imagine. During this time, I understood that there was a lot of things I didn't know. I also understood there was a lot of things that I did know. I understood there was a difference between the brain and the mind. The list that was on the brain was so many things that I couldn't do, versus the list on my mind was just a few things. I understood, however, if I don't, com if I don't compare the amount of things on each list, but rather the power of the mind versus the power of the brain, I could unlock a superpower. But I was so frustrated. Why is this happening to me? What is going on? I see concussions all the time in the news. Football players get it all the time. They just sit out for a month and they're back scoring touchdowns all over again. Why is it this bad for me? What's happening? Well, I understood that this was happening to me for two reasons. One, the human body reacts differently to every injury it takes. You or I could suffer the same exact injury and our bodies could react completely different. But I already knew this. Still, this is so drastic, this is so peculiar. The doctors had never seen this before. Why is this happening to me? I then understood that every time the human body is about to get hit, the body has a second and the eyes flinch, the muscles contract, and your entire body prepares for the fall that it's about to endure. It takes a second, and it knows what's about to come. When I fell, one, two, three, one, two, three, slip, fall, I fell on the back of my head. My body was completely blindsided. It was a banana peel slip, and I was completely blindsided as to what I was about to endure. My brain and body was so vulnerable 
and was so ready to accept all the trauma that it was about to endure. And because of that, on a scale of one to 10, I got 10. Still, I was frustrated. Why are all the doctors telling me different things? You know, it's an injury. People get hurt all the time. We read about it all the time. Why can't they give me an answer? You would think they know everything about this by now. I became a sensation. Let me pick your brain, everyone gossip. Let me pick your brain, the doctors talked in the workrooms. Let me pick your brain, everyone was sending in WhatsApp and Facebook and in group chats. They were wondering from coast to coast, from country to country, which doctor, which neighbor's cousin's friend could solve this viral case, this viral sensation? What is happening to her? Let me pick your brain, everyone gossiped. Everyone was giving me different advice and I was even more frustrated. I know that I'm going through a lot, but why can't anyone help me? I cried and I cried for help. Well, this was because of two reasons. One, if I got a foot injury and went to a foot doctor, they could easily solve my problem with a simple solution. But I didn't injure my foot, I injured my brain. Injuring my brain meant injuring my foot, injuring my fingertips, injuring my words, injuring my thoughts, injuring my actions, my heartbeat, everything. The brain controls everything. So getting an injury to the brain isn't just as easy as it sounds, going to the brain doctor and getting it fixed, no. You have to go to the doctor for every little thing that it controls. Why isn't every doctor giving me one solution? Why are they giving me different things? Well, this is because you're the US map, Kirtana, I told myself. What? You're the US map. Every doctor has a different copy of the map, but you're the US map. One doctor has the US map divided into states. Another doctor has the US map divided into population. And the other doctor has the US map divided into topology. They're all looking at the US map. They're looking at it through a different lens. That's why you're getting different advice. I understood. Because of this, I was able to take everyone's input and ultimately let my mind drive me into overcoming this. One day, my neck wouldn't stand up. For some reason, the neurons that were supposed to tell my neck to contract and stay up weren't working. Physical therapists were asking me to move my neck and I couldn't. My mom so casually played dance music one day and my neck stiffened up. Everyone was shocked. The medical students working on my case for extra credit were taking notes. What is happening? Once I heard these beats, takita, 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 my neck was able to move. Takita, 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 takita. Whereas I couldn't control it a second ago, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, it was falling everywhere. This was because of muscle memory. This doesn't rely on the brain at all. And if I let myself tap into my mind, muscle memory could take over and do what the body is destined to do anyways. That same day, I had an EEG schedule in which they would attach wires to my brain and it would rope down the side of my body. For some reason, the wires reminded me of the braid that I would tie before going on stage. And the white casing they placed on my head reminded me of the jasmine flowers that I would put in my hair before going on stage. My dance teacher walked in and I said, hey, Mari auntie, come on in. I'm just getting ready. I'm about to go on stage, perform. I was lying on a hospital bed with wires in my hair. What, are, what is she talking about? Everyone was so confused. Nonetheless, I was living in an alternate reality that my mind decided. Just a few months later, from September 29, 2018, all the way to July 2019, this picture was taken, in which my wires did transform into my braid and my white casing did transform into my jasmine flowers. Today, I'm studying bioinformatics and I'm scheduled to graduate in three years. Not only did I complete a four hour dance solo, I'm the proud owner of my very own dance institution. This is the power of the mind. I realized 
my brain didn't have to shake for me to realize this. I didn't have to undergo this injury for me to unlock the superpower. Guess what? Your brain doesn't have to undergo an injury to realize the superpower that it has either. Let me pick your brain. What would you be doing right now if you could do anything you want in an alternate reality? What would you be doing right now if you had no limitations and you could do whatever you want? What would you be doing right now even if you had limitations but you were blindsided to them? What would you be doing right now? Why are you not doing that? And what can you do right now to get there? Let me pick your brain. Thank you. <laughs>